So I'm over here at Falcon Fury Harley Davidson in Georgia, heading uh, to the Friday the 13th camp, Hard Labor Creek. Just trying to get some rain gear because I definitely didn't pack any or bring any. Whatever. Uh, found a cover for my bike, so that works. I'm not gonna play this too long because, well, there's music in the background. I don't feel like getting copyrighted. Um, pretty cool place, actually, though. <laughs> a lot of a lot of CBOs on the floor. Let's take a look around. So Falcon Fury, um, they're having a little event today and part of it is they've got some bike games. So me trying to kill some time and seeing if I can make an ass of myself, I signed up for the slow race. Uh, we'll see how uh, Betty and I do on that. Right now it doesn't look like there's too many people competing, so hey, maybe we'll crush this one. Like things just got a little hairy. I just added in another bag, some ice, a bunch of drinks. I got about half an hour to go. We'll see how this works out. All right, we are back on the highway. We are heading to Hard Labor Creek. The actual camp we're going to is like Camp Daniel, David. I don't, I'll put the name here. I've already forgotten. Uh, gotta take it a little bit easier now because man, I just, I bought a cooler bag. I bought a bunch of drinks and stuff like that and a uh, bag of ice and uh, it's it's been uh, quite tricky to mount it all on my uh, bike so hopefully all this stuff is going to be there when i get to the camp but uh no guarantees and i feel bad for anyone who feels like the incessant need to be right behind me on the highway they might be getting pelted with some stuff soon but uh fingers crossed and uh, i'll check back in with you when uh, we get close to the camp we are now in Hard Labor Creek State Park. Looks pretty much like the roads I've been driving down already. <laughs> Let's uh, see. Camp Daniel Morgan is uh, where we're going on Daniel Morgan Road, which is in 0.2 miles. So it should be coming up somewhere along the lines. I think somebody's going to be taking money from me. I think it's like five bucks to park or some crap. Is this it? This is it. All right. People are hanging out. I'm going to shut this off. Oh, we're at the camp office. What camp office? Camp Crystal Lake. That's what camp. Oh, what's up? I've already seen Jason. He seemed kind of annoyed that I was like, hey, what's up, dude? I'm sure that dude's like sweating balls in that costume right now. <laughs> I also saw Freddy roaming around because apparently he's just hanging out around here too. Um, yeah. <laughs> this will be my bed for the next few days. I'm in cabin number two. We'll take a look around outside as well. But yeah, that's where I'm hanging out. Dig those transformer sheets, because I'm an adult. Camp Crystal Lake. Let's walk down the pier. <laughs> Somewhere in the murky depths lays Jason. Or, eh, I mean, it depends if we're at the beginning of the movie or the end of the movie because he could still be buried, or he might be down there. So clearly the deck's been replaced since the movie. Uh, this is all like composite wood, but that's fine. A whole lot less splinters. Water is warm, but it's also brown as all hell, so there's a fair chance there could be a bunch of dead bodies down here. <laughs> there, is, there is no guarantee either way. But aside from that, it's a really nice area. Definitely be fun once the festivities start kicking off. There's a dude in a canoe just singing Man Behind the Mask out there right now. It's uh, pretty entertaining. So I know one of the questions would be, why am I so excited for Friday the 13th part six, as opposed to like part one or 
you know, other filming locations. And quite honestly, to me, this is like where Friday the 13th really found its stride. Um, this is where they actually brought Jason back to life from the dead. Like the movie starts off with like Tommy Jarvis digging up his grave, ramming a steel rod through him, and then all of a sudden he gets hit by lightning. So it's the first time they really committed to him uh, actually being a zombie, being undead. Before that, it just seemed like a guy who could take a lot of punishment. Um, those were cool, but I feel like this is like really the peak of the movies. Like there's just that right amount of comedy, there's just that right amount of horror. Um, I really liked Jason's look in this movie. I thought this was like more of like the pinnacle sort of look for him. After this um, is when Kane Hodder took over on Jason. And I know it's an unpopular opinion, but I am less a fan of the Kane Hodder films than any of the other Jason films. Mainly because when Kane Hodder came in, that's when things started getting increasingly they would start going downhill and getting cheesier um, like Jason takes New York that was so dumb I remember the part where he's like walking down like Central Square and he like kicks over this uh, gang's boombox and like they they all like they're about to jump and and he turns around and takes his mask off scares them and they run away that's dumb that's not what Jason would do I mean he would just pull out his machete and start murdering everyone so I, I feel like the longer Kane Hodder was in, uh, entrusted with Jason, the, the cheeser it became. This to me is the absolute pinnacle of everything that Jason Friday the 13th was. So day two at the camp, um, I wanted to try and catch this video bright and early in the morning before everyone wakes up. First thing I want to talk about is this dining hall. This dining hall has actually gotten a ton of usage over the years. In the original Friday the 13th part six, this dining hall was used for a bunch of different stuff. But the two most important things are, it was used for the girls inside of the girls cabin and inside of the boys cabin. They would just move the furniture around each time and uh, make it look like two different cabins even though it's not a cabin at all. The other thing it was used for is even though Fear Street 1978 wasn't filmed here, uh, it was actually filmed at a camp across the lake, they did use this mess hall and they used this kitchen that's in the back. We'll take a look at that as well. Um, this uh, dining hall was used when uh, the kids ran in and they were hiding from like the axe murderer and they were in with all the snakes and spiders and you know all that this is where that was shot and then you know when they ran into the kitchen to grab a knife and stuff this is the kitchen that was used so let's go in and take a look at that so as you can see it looks nothing like uh, a camper's room but there were bunk beds set up and all that stuff um, our tour guide was telling us about it if you come over here this is where like Nancy's bed would have been and like the scene where Jason's like walking across and you see him in all the windows would have been right here. This door right here, the one I just came into, when like Jason smashes through a door and like all the leaves are blowing in and stuff like that, that's the door he did it. The second door he smashed through was this as well. They're also telling us too a little bit of like information. If you come out here and you look at like the grating, it's all kind of like leaned it downwards. They actually had to build a platform for Jason to walk across because you would have just seen his head otherwise. Um, that wood pile as well, that was used, like uh, where it holds all the wood, that was used for um, one of the scenes as well, <laughs> where like the police are looking around. So yeah, and then again, in Fear Street 1978, uh, this was all filled with like snakes and spiders and stuff. Don't mind all the noise, that's actually all the fans. But yeah, they used this for that. When this was the kid's cabin, they actually just built up over this door to make it look like it wasn't here. Um, so you didn't see that it led into a kitchen. But that's, that's some pretty cool stuff. <laughs> like uh, this is probably one of the biggest rooms in the camp which is why they had to use it for both the boys and the girls' cabins because the cabins were singing pretty damn small. So this kitchen is still largely intact from 
Friday the 13th. And like I said, it was also used in Fear Street, uh, 1978. This is where they came in, in Fear Street, 1978, and they got a knife. Um, in Friday the 13th, mainly the characters were sitting right here. It was towards the beginning when like they were talking about like the history of the camp and whatnot. And all these screens were removed. So the bus could pull up and they all kind of looked out the window and they were all afraid of the kids and they were talking about how they'd rather spend time with Jason. But this is it. Most of the camera angles were over here. That's why you never saw the hood from the oven and stuff. So it would have been like here and then like various areas for close-ups. But yeah, they would be sitting right there. Bus, windows, all that. There you go. That's the kitchen. So in real life, this building used to be a recreation hall uh, for Friday the 13th. This was used as the exterior for the boys' cabin. Uh, they actually didn't use the building at all, just this exterior. Um, over the years, it's definitely seen some better days, but there you go. It's still there, and apparently they're currently working on rehabbing it, bringing it back to life. They actually put in some new footings and stuff. There's a, a new movie's coming in to be filming here. They want to use this building, so they actually use some of the budget to fix it. Um, we were told that up until this point, this building was even worse condition and looked like it was coming down pretty soon. So, movie saving history, yay. So this back of the building, it's actually like still right up front for the camp. This is actually kind of shows you how like when filming happens, how everything can just be in one little place, but spread out at the same time, or it looks like it's spread out camera-wise. Uh, this part of the building, if you actually go back and watch the movie, this is where the sheriff and Jason face off. And like, he's, the sheriff has a shotgun, he shoots him a few times. He's falling, rolling, sitting back up. Sheriff then uses a handgun. Sheriff ends up running away. The sheriff would have been there. Jason would have been right here. And then the sheriff, when he was finally like, screw this, I'm out, <laughs> ran down that way. But uh, yeah, this is a cool little piece of history. So I wanted to get this shot so you could see that if you go back and you watch the movie, all this still lines up. This building was there, like we're right at the entrance. This all used to be dirt, but uh, these two posts actually went all the way up. And that was the actual sign for the campground these two posts still exist so it's still here that was still used but all of this other stuff this was all how it was laid out and all how it was set up for the movie so this right here is overflow for the camp and then the entrance is right there so just to give you an idea of how close everything is this used to be dirt it was it's now overflow parking but this is where they parked the rv in the movie you had like the two characters kind of going at it <laughs> when uh, Jason pulled the power and ended up like you know they they freaked out and took off and you know he kills them both in the RV and crashes it this is actually where it all started this is where the RV was parked so as we come up on the dock I actually uh, want to talk about I did find out that the footings are original here but you know the top has been re replaced with composite wood uh, for the movie they're actually rails right here, posts right here with lights running all the way down here. There was actually a reason for that. Um, so one of the kills that you see, Jason standing right there at that tree. Then you have one of the deputies right about here and there was a boat here. So he's swinging around with his flashlight. He sees Jason, Jason throws a spear at him. He dies and lands in a boat here. So the reason for the lighting was uh, Tom, the director, was a huge fan of like Psycho and stuff like that, where they had the uh, the swinging light that kind of revealed um, the dead person, like uh, the dead mother and Psycho. But he wanted to recreate that scene because he really liked it. So when that deputy got killed, when you go to watch the movie, um, you see the light kind of swinging back and forth across his face uh, with the spear in it. So that's what he was doing. Um, that was the whole goal of that, and that's why they put the lights here. Also, right about here, 
is where they did the pyro for where the lake was on fire and whatnot. Um, one of the things we were told, and it does make sense, is most of those underwater scenes weren't filmed here. They were actually filmed uh, in a pool in California uh, that was just surrounded with like black, tar, uh, black tarps to make it look darker. It was also uh, filmed at Tom's parents' swimming pool. Same thing, black tarps. And that makes sense because, as I pointed out before, this water is very brown and very dirty. There's no way they would be getting those shots. If you go back and you look at the uh, the movie, that water is very clear and very uh, very easy and very friendly to shoot under. So yeah, all the top shots done up here. So when you see them like diving into the water and stuff. They jump in, land on a crash pad, and then it cuts to the pool, and that's where they land in the water, and you know, they go underneath and they start taking care of things. But like the boat, the fire, all that stuff, right there. So this is the entrance to the cemetery that they used. Uh, that house, still here. Uh, that little shack, see that in the movie. See all this stuff. But for the actual filming, they didn't actually film down there. They the cars raced down here and then uh, they used the other side of the cemetery which we're now going to go over to but uh, there was definitely um, a fake wooden eternal rest cemetery like uh, sign right here and all that stuff that was torn down shortly after but this is the road they use. So Tommy ramps his truck over these train tracks and down into the cemetery and like the sign would be right over there over the cemetery uh, the cemetery entrance sign but that was put up just for the movie then it, you know, goes down. But the actual entrance that they used for the cemetery is the exact same entrance for the campground. So all the road and stuff leading up to this wasn't used. It was, it was all from the campsite and then they cut to this cemetery. Now we're going back away from where you saw them drive because the actual like areas that they used for like um, filming for like digging up Jason and whatnot, we're actually on the other side of the cemetery. So let's go take care of that. So the way it was explained, um, all the resurrection scene, all digging up Jason and all that was not actually done in the cemetery. They used um, a cemetery out in California and they used uh, somebody's backyard and just kind of built it up to make it look like it was still in this area. So that's a little sad, but still very cool. All the uh, all the chase scenes and stuff were done here, though. Um, apparently, during the chase scenes, they had people from the cemetery like watching like a hawk because uh, where the stunt drivers were running around, they were doing like 80 miles an hour, and they were driving by like Civil War like headstones. So a lot of like history and significance going on here, and you know, obviously, they didn't want stuff damaged. Pretty sweet. So all this gating and fencing behind me, this is actually where. Um, when Tommy was running from the sheriffs and he was trying to prove that Jason had been dug up and he was still alive. Uh, this is where he was like zigzagging through, which is still at the top of the cemetery, obviously. It en ends on the other side. They uh, they filmed it twice, so there was like a close up and a wide shot, but then there was also crane shots. The director was going for like a very frantic sort of like approach. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really crazy because it's just such a small tight area, just like the camp itself. And it's just because of all the different angles and shots that they used, it just felt like so much bigger and more encompassing than it really was. Yeah, let's go swimming, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Nope. So I'm no expert on the matter, but I think the movie by the lake is going to be canceled tonight. We'll see. Let's hold out hope. So I have a very special guest with me um, here at Camp Crystal Lake. I just wanted to ask him a few questions. Uh, I heard he's a very chatty guy and uh, he should be able to let us in on a lot of the history around here. So let me introduce Jason Voorhees. Now I heard you're pretty much a lifelong resident around here. You're hanging out. Good with kids. Do you find it hard to like really get attention when people are like on their cell phones all the time, like kids playing on games and stuff? All right, thanks man. You've been very informative. <laughs> this is the only way you should fight with Jason. 
One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. Ah! Fucking <laughs> suck! Ah. All right, guys, so we just finished watching Jason Lives uh, up in one of the wreck houses because it is torrential downpours all since like three o'clock this afternoon. It was really cool and it really brought a whole like fresh view of the movie to me because yesterday we did all the walkthroughs and they showed us where everything was filmed and like this morning, like, you know, we got to see the cemetery and all that. So it was really, really cool to then watch the movie and actually recognize a lot of this stuff and kind of recognize some of the movie magic and how they kind of like, like I said, the camp is very, very small. And then they use like such a small section of the small camp to make this all like come together. So totally cool. Like it's, it was totally worth the trip down here. Apparently they do this as an annual thing. Um, you know, you should definitely check it out. I'm going to drop uh, their name and their link and all that stuff down in the comments or down in the description box because um, you really should see them. It's uh, Onset Cinema. These guys were fantastic. They, they were very accommodating. Great group of people. They're doing these all over the country. Um, different stuff like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, a couple of the other Friday the 13th movies. I think they're actually doing one in the UK with the Rocky Horror Picture. So, I mean, it's if there's one coming around you, you should definitely do it. It's it's worth the whole thing. Aside from that, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share this with friends, share it with family, share it with the man behind the mask. He's out of control, but he loves this stuff, trust me. And I'll see you all on the flip side.